Act, many wonder whether the authorities will have the will to enforce the ban. China has about 300 million smokers, but those in Beijing will now have to be careful where they light up. From Monday, smoking in the capital is being banned, in restaurants, offices and on buses, in fact in all indoor public places. It's hoped it will help save some of the million or so people who die of smoking-related illnesses each year in China. There'll be fines for those who don't comply, and thousands of inspectors to check the rules are being followed. Some places are already prepared. This manager at Beijing Airport says designated smoking areas have been set up outside the terminal buildings. But there have been smoking bans in Beijing before, and none of them have worked because of too many loopholes and poor enforcement. And a survey found most people think this one will be just as ineffective. That report was by Michael Bristow. And before we go, a reminder of today's main world news. Many schools have reopened in Nepal five weeks after the devastating earthquake. British banks are reviewing transactions involving FIFA after being named in the FBI indictment against 14 football officials. Human rights activists have accused Iraqi officials of preventing thousands of families fleeing fighting in Ambar from reaching safer parts of the country. Stay with us if you can here on the BBC World Service. Eileen will have a summary of world news for you in just a moment. But for now, from me, Jackie Leonard, and the rest of the newsroom team. Thanks for listening. Documentary on the BBC World Service. In our series, The Truth About AIDS, we've been looking at the medical and social impact of HIV AIDS. Once you get the news that you have contracted HIV, the next question is, who do you tell? In the final edition, clinical psychologist Margarita Holmes considers the dilemma